My dearly beloved in Christ, September this year is very unusual, and I'm not speaking because of the unseasonable snowfall, but of the five Sundays of September this year, three of them have been feast days. That is, the typical Sunday after Pentecost is, uh, instead of being offered, the precedence is given to the feast of the day. We had two second-class feasts, the Nativity of Our Lady on the 8th of September and the Seven Sorrows on the 15th. And today we have a very important first-class feast, the dedication of St. Michael the Archangel, which is to honor not only St. Michael, but all the heavenly spirits, all the members of the nine choirs of angels. Throughout Scripture, we see the angels and archangels and seraphim and cherubim often mentioned. And then we have two epistles of St. Paul to the Ephesians and the Colossians, in which he mentions the other five choirs, the thrones and dominations, the principalities and powers and virtues. So all told, nine choirs of heavenly spirits. And there are millions and millions of these angels, beautiful creatures, pleasing to God, and endowed far above us with wisdom and, and power and talent. So we should honor them and we should also remember that they are powerful intercessor, intercessors. Sometimes we can be a bit overwhelmed by temptation, by the spiritual struggle, and we must remember that we have all of these heavenly intercessors. Saint, uh, Saint John in the Apocalypse talks about that first battle which took place in heaven. And there was a battle in heaven. Michael and his angels with the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And they did not prevail, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And that great dragon was cast down, the ancient serpent, he who is called the devil and Satan, who leads astray the whole world. And he was cast down to the earth, and with him his angels were cast down. Taken from the twelfth chapter of the Apocalypse. So, St. Michael then is the champion of God. In the Old Testament, he was the protector of the chosen people. We find St. Michael mentioned by name in the book of Daniel the prophet, the Apocalypse, the epistle of St. Jude, and mentioned in other places as well. And he's a very powerful angel that we should invoke. You've often heard of the story of a vision of Pope Leo XIII in which our Divine Lord allowed the evil spirits to have more sway in this world than they previously had. And the Pope wrote a prayer to St. Michael and commanded that it should be recited every day after low mass, that we invoke the power of this great champion of God. It is important for us to remember that we are on the winning side. And that in the latter times, when the Antichrist makes his appearance, that he will eventually be destroyed, by conquered by St. Michael, and cast into hell. There's a story told in the Old Testament of the prophet Eliseus in the fourth book of Kings. And Eliseus, with his servant, was in a certain city, and the king of Syria wanted to capture Eliseus. So he took his army at nighttime and surrounded the city and laid siege to the city. And in the morning, when the sun came up, the people in the city saw this large army surrounding the city. And the servant of Eliseus was terrified. And he said to his master, Eliseus the prophet, look at the enemy, they're going to capture us. And Eliseus said, you do not realize all of the angels, all of the soldiers that we have on our side. And he prayed that God would open his eyes, and his servant then saw fiery chariots and horses on the hills around the city, which were angels, to protect his prophet. 
reminds us of what our Lord said when he was arrested uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he began his passion. And St. Peter had drawn his sword and wanted to defend our Lord. And he said, put up your sword, for my father could send ten legions of angels, if he wished, to defend me. So there are these angels, and they are powerful intercessors, and we must pray to them, especially in times of temptation. Now I'd like to turn our attention for a minute to the gospel of the day, in which our Lord speaks about the terrible evil of scandal. What is scandal? Scandal is leading another into sin. Bad example or bad advice that becomes the cause of the sin of another. And our Lord especially denounces the scandal of children because he says their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. In other words, our Lord teaches us the existence of guardian angels. But let us reflect upon this fact. Why is scandal such a terrible sin? So terrible that it would be better for one who scandalizes a child to have a millstone tied around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea, rather than that he should scandalize a child. Because children come into the world in a state of innocence, and they're only, they're taught evil by bad companions. They are scandalized by bad movies and pictures and songs and language and so forth by others. And what a terrible thing to, if a child falls into a bad habit, being led into that bad habit by another, and then that habit becomes an inveterate habit which ends up becoming the damnation of that child. Would that not be a terrible thing? And imagine the guilt of the one who's responsible for that scandal. Now when our Lord says it must needs be that scandals come, he's not saying that it's part of God's plan or that it's a good thing. He is saying it's going to happen given fallen human nature. There will be scandals. Nevertheless, woe to that man from whom scandal comes. And then you think about those words and you think about the many scandals of the day, all of the media, all of the indecent books and movies and pictures and so forth. What a terrible thing when you reflect upon the words of our Lord. And even parents can be guilty of the sin of scandal with their children if they do not prevent their children from accessing these occasions of sin or if they fail to lead the family in prayer, to see that their children attend Mass and receive the sacraments, etc. So we should think about the sin of scandal. It is a sin against charity. It is a sin against the fifth commandment. Because by the fifth commandment, we are commanded to respect the bodily and spiritual well-being of ourselves and our neighbor. So just as killing, taking the life of another is a heinous crime, what about depriving another of spiritual life by leading him or her into sin? That is even worse because the soul is of greater value than the body. So let us, in reflecting upon the angels, remember always that we have a guardian angel with us that there are all these heavenly spirits. Our church is filled with angels adoring our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And they are about us all the time. And even though the devil also is there with his temptations, we must invoke the angels and respect the guardian angels of others. Always give a good example. Avoid that terrible evil of scandal. And call upon the holy angels to help us in this great battle it is a battle for souls. As St. Paul says in his epistle, it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but a battle of principalities and powers in the high places. It is a battle for the salvation, the welfare of immortal souls. And in that battle, we have powerful intercessors. Let us make certain that we invoke them.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.